Have a little kid one has responded to one of our videos, Hebrews 6. Uh, does Hebrews 6 speak of the Gentile church? And uh, thank you, Evelyn, one, for coming on board here. Uh, when we look at the book of Hebrews, what we have to understand about our Bible is Paul states that we are, we are to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, that we are to rightly divide the word of truth. In 2 Timothy 2.15, he makes that recognition. When God writes in the Bible, he writes to certain parties to different timelines for a specific reason. The Pauline epistles from the book of Romans through to the book of Philemon are the Pauline Gentile epistles. All the doctrines relative to the Gentile body of believers in the church can be found within those scriptures. So when the Hebrew writer writes to Hebrews, he's obviously not speaking to Gentiles. If you contrast what the scriptures in the book of Hebrews is writing about, you're going to note that he's referring to uh, items relative to the Israeli people, be it in Abraham, the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek, uh, be it uh, some of the heroes of faith that are outlined in the book of Hebrews. It's all relative to the nation and people of Israel. That book is specifically designed to prepare the nation and people of Israel for the literal second advent. So when the man has sinned, the son of perdition, who opposed himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, as noted by Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 24, when he speaks about the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, when he stands in that holy place, that the Israeli people are to respond by fleeing and getting out of there. The reason being is because they are going to be under such persecution such as the world has not seen, nor ever shall see. And they will love their lives if need be not unto death. They will become martyrs for the testimony of Jesus Christ and for the word of God. And a man of sin will impose such persecution that he will cause all parties, small and great, free, and bond, uh, free or bond, rich or poor, to receive a mark either in their right hand and or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he have that mark of the beast or the number of his name. So you can't buy or sell save you have that mark of the beast. In Revelation chapter 14, we have the everlasting gospel that corresponds to these themes that are introduced in preparation for the second advent with the nation and people of Israel. And it states in the everlasting gospel that if any man worship the beast or his image, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture, into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented day and night in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, or whosoever receives the mark of his name. So the gospel message has some added revelation in that time period. Obviously, the blood atonement, there's nothing beyond the blood atonement. The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. But now you're going to have to prove your faith as a tale by the book of James, which just happens to be written to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. So the book of James and the book of the Hebrews go hand in hand with the book of Revelation in preparation for the nation and people of Israel for the literal second advent. Remember the Apostle Paul says in Galatians, And when James, Cephas, and John, who seem to be pillars, perceive the grace that is given unto me, they gave unto me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we, that's Barnabas and Paul, should go unto the heathen, that's the Gentiles, and they, that's Peter, James, and John, should go unto the circumcision and or the Jew. So the Apostle Paul in Romans 11.13 clearly identifies his, his status as the Apostle to the Gentiles, and clearly identifies Peter, James, and John and their status and their relationship to their ministry in the Lord as to the circumcision and or the Jew.